Where do the Scottish people really come from? For centuries, this has been one of Europe's most debated mysteries. Some say the Scots are direct descendants of the ancient Celts. Others believe their roots stretch even deeper, back to the very first settlers who crossed into the British Isles thousands of years ago. Now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have discovered is surprising. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to explore the hidden truths inside Scottish DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think the Scottish people are purely Celtic? Let me know in the comments. To understand where the Scottish people come from, we have to go back far beyond clans, castles, and Celtic legends. Scotland's story begins at the end of the last Ice Age, when small groups of hunter-gatherers reached these lands for the very first time. These early people lived in a world that looked nothing like modern Scotland. The coastline was different. The forests were thicker. Large parts of the land were still emerging from ice. Life was simple, hard, and deeply connected to the environment. They followed animal migrations. They lived near rivers and beaches. They used stone tools for everything. Ancient DNA tells us something interesting about them. They did not look like the modern Scottish population. Their skin tones were probably darker. Their features were different. They belonged to genetic groups that once lived across Western Europe, from Spain to Doggerland, the lost land that now sits under the North Sea. For thousands of years, they were the only people here. But everything changed when new groups arrived with a very different way of life. Around 6,000 years ago, Scotland experienced one of the biggest population changes in its history. New people arrived from the south. They were farmers who had traveled slowly across Europe, generation by generation, bringing crops, animals, pottery, and new ideas. These farmers did not just move in. They transformed everything. They cleared forests for fields. They built permanent homes. They even built some of the first stone monuments found anywhere in Britain. What surprised scientists is how quickly they replaced the hunter-gatherer population. In many parts of Scotland, the genetic signature of the earlier groups almost disappears. It seems the farming way of life spread fast, and the old hunter-gatherer lifestyle faded with it. These Neolithic farmers carried ancestry that originally began in the Middle East, moved into the Balkans, reached the Mediterranean, and slowly made its way north. When we look at the DNA of Neolithic skeletons across the British Isles, including Scotland, we see the same pattern, a clear genetic shift. A new population had arrived and taken root. But even this big change was only one layer of the story. A much more dramatic shift was still thousands of years away. Around 4,500 years ago, a group of people began moving across Europe from the grasslands north of the Black Sea. Today, geneticists call this ancestry Steppe Ancestry. These people brought new tools, new customs, and a different worldview. They also brought something that left a huge impact, a powerful male lineage that spread rapidly. When steppe-related groups reached Britain, the genetic landscape changed again. In some regions, they replaced most of the male population in only a few centuries. This was not a slow blending of cultures. It was a sharp transition that archaeologists can see clearly in the DNA. In Scotland, steppe ancestry had a strong influence, especially on the male line. Many modern Scottish Y chromosome lines come from this Bronze Age expansion. These groups likely spoke Indo-European languages, which later evolved into early Celtic tongues. They brought metalworking. They introduced new burial practices. They created new forms of trade. Their arrival also set the stage for the cultures we now associate with early Scotland. This was one of the most important migrations in Scottish history. Without it, the later Celtic world, the early clans, and much of Scotland's identity would look very different today. Many people think of Scots as Celtic by default, but the truth is more complicated. The Celtic identity did not suddenly appear in Scotland. It formed slowly as languages, cultural practices, and ideas moved across Europe. The earliest Celtic languages likely developed in Central Europe. From there, 
they spread into France, Spain, Ireland, and eventually Scotland. But the Celtic expansion into Scotland did not erase the earlier populations, it blended with them. By the time Celtic languages reached Scotland, the people living here were already a genetic mix of older groups, the hunter-gatherers, the Mediterranean-derived farmers, and the Bronze Age steppe groups. Celtic culture layered itself onto this older mix. So when we say Celtic Scotland, we are mostly talking about culture and language, not a single, uniform ancestry. The real genetic picture is much more diverse, and that diversity is part of what makes Scotland's past so interesting. A long time after the Celts came another group that left a strong mark, especially in the north. Norse settlers from Scandinavia reached the coasts and islands of Scotland during the Viking Age. They established settlements in Orkney, Shetland, and parts of the Highlands. The Vikings influenced place names, trade routes, and local customs. They brought new styles of clothing and a different approach to leadership and warfare. But genetically, their impact was more focused. In the far north, Norse DNA remains strong today. In Orkney and Shetland, it forms a large part of the population's ancestry. But in the rest of Scotland, Viking DNA is present at lower levels. Their cultural influence was greater than their genetic footprint. The Viking story adds another layer to Scotland's ancestry. When scientists started studying ancient Scottish DNA, they found something surprising. Some older stories about Scotland's early people were wrong or incomplete. The Picts, for example, were often described as a lost or mysterious group. But the DNA says something different. The Picts were not outsiders, they were part of the local population. Their ancestry connects smoothly with modern Scots, especially those in the Highlands. This means the Pictish identity was cultural, not genetic. They were not a vanished race. They were simply one of the many groups that helped shape Scotland. Another unexpected strand appears when comparing Scottish and Irish DNA. Scots and Irish people share a very close genetic connection due to similar ancient layers. But there are differences too. Scotland has higher steppe ancestry than some parts of Ireland. Scotland also has stronger Norse influence in the north. Both regions share deep ties, but each has its own story shaped by different migrations and environments. By looking at all these layers together, a clear picture emerges. Scotland is not defined by one origin or one people. It is a mosaic shaped by thousands of years of movement and change. You have the first hunter-gatherers who explored the land after the Ice Age. You have the Neolithic farmers who transformed the landscape with crops and tools. The steppe migrants who brought new languages and a strong male lineage. Celtic influence that shaped culture more than DNA the Norse settlers who added another regional layer, and local groups like the Picts who tied everything together. When these layers mix, they create the ancestry of modern Scots. Today, when scientists analyze the DNA of people across Scotland, they see patterns that reflect this long history. In the Highlands, older genetic layers remain strong. Pictish continuity appears in families who lived in the same valleys for centuries. In the northern islands, Norse ancestry is clear and distinct. In the lowlands, you find more mixture due to centuries of movement, trade, and migration. One of the most surprising findings is how ancient some Scottish genetic lines are. In remote coastal areas and isolated islands, scientists discover DNA signatures that go back thousands of years. These places preserved ancestry that disappeared elsewhere in Britain. Modern Scottish DNA shows a balance of all the major layers – hunter-gatherer, Neolithic farmer, steppe warrior, Celtic cultural influence, and Norse migration. But the mix is never the same across the entire country. Each region has its own story. Each carries a different blend of ancient threads. This is why Scottish ancestry feels so deep and so diverse at the same time. In recent years, scientists have been able to sequence ancient DNA from burial sites across Scotland. These samples allowed them to look at ancestry in a way that was not possible before. The results reshaped what historians believed about Scotland's earliest people. 
one of the most important discoveries came from skeletons found in Orkney and the Highlands. Scientists compared their DNA with samples from the first farmers, the early hunter-gatherers, and the later Bronze Age groups. What they found was a pattern that did not match the older archaeological interpretations. It showed that Scottish ancestry was never built by one group replacing another. This made the story more complex, but also more interesting. It showed that Scotland was home to several populations living side by side, mixing in different ways depending on the region. For many years, the Picts were described as mysterious. Their symbols were hard to interpret. Their language was debated. Some older theories suggested they were a separate group that disappeared after the early Middle Ages. But DNA research changed this idea completely. When scientists examined DNA from Pictish-era skeletons in northern and eastern Scotland, the results were clear. The Picts were not outsiders. They were descendants of the same ancient groups already living in the region for thousands of years. Their culture was unique, but their ancestry was deeply local. This finding showed that the Picts did not vanish. Their descendants continued to live in the highlands and across northern Scotland. Families in these areas carry genetic signatures that match the Pictish samples. This helped resolve one of the long-standing questions about Scotland's early medieval population. It also showed that cultural identity and genetic ancestry do not always move in the same direction. A culture can disappear while the people remain. Another important piece of the story involves the arrival of Gaelic-speaking groups from Ireland. This movement took place during the early medieval period. These migrants settled in western Scotland, especially in Argyll, and formed a kingdom known as Dalriata. Over time, Gaelic language and culture spread across much of Scotland. It influenced local traditions, place names, and leadership structures. This shift shaped the early Scottish kingdom. Gaelic became a major cultural force, even though the genetic impact was more modest than the cultural one. The Gaelic arrival blended with the earlier populations already living in Scotland. Instead of replacing them, the culture merged into the existing mosaic. This blending explains why Scottish and Irish DNA share many similarities, while still keeping distinct regional differences. It also explains why Gaelic tradition holds such a strong place in Scotland's identity today even though the ancestry behind it is older and more mixed than the cultural narrative suggests. While Rome never fully conquered Scotland, the Roman world still left its mark. The frontier at Hadrian's Wall created a long-term boundary between Roman Britain and the lands to the north. This border became a zone of contact, trade, and conflict. Archaeological evidence shows that goods moved across this frontier. Some local groups adopted Roman objects or ideas. Others remained separate. A few Roman soldiers settled in the region during or after their service, adding small but noticeable genetic traces that appear in some later populations. Although the Roman presence did not reshape Scotland's DNA in a major way, it played a role in shaping early identities. After the ancient and early medieval periods, Scotland continued to receive new groups of people. Each wave added another strand to the genetic landscape. Anglo-Saxon influence touched the southeastern regions, though not to the same extent as in England. Norman families arrived after 1066 and played major roles in shaping the lowland aristocracy. Flemish settlers came during the medieval period and contributed to trade, crafts, and urban life. Later, large movements from Ireland added to the population of the lowlands during industrial growth. Migration from England also increased after political union. These movements did not replace the older ancestry. They blended into it. As a result, Scotland developed regional differences that reflect both ancient and more recent history. Coastal towns often show more outside influence, while isolated rural areas kept much older ancestry patterns. This combination of long-term continuity and periodic arrivals is one reason modern Scottish DNA is more diverse than many people expect. When scientists mapped DNA from across Scotland, they noticed patterns tied to geography, family history, and long-term settlement. In the Highlands, older layers remain strong. In Orkney and Shetland, Norse ancestry is stronger than in other parts of Scotland. 
These islands had long-standing connections with Scandinavia. Their DNA reflects that history clearly. Families here can still trace a meaningful share of their ancestry to Viking-era settlers. The lowlands show a different pattern. This region has more mixture from later migrations, including Norman, English, Irish, and Flemish groups. Trade routes, political unions, and economic opportunities made the lowlands a more connected and mobile region over time. Even surnames can reflect these layers. Some highland surnames connect with early clans shaped by Celtic and Pictish roots. Island surnames can reflect Norse influence. Lowland surnames often match names introduced through later European movements. These regional patterns show how ancestry and geography work together over thousands of years. They also help explain why modern Scots carry a wide range of genetic influences while still maintaining a strong shared national identity. The history of Scotland, from ancient hunter-gatherers and Celtic tribes to Pictish kingdoms, Viking settlers, and global migrations. Every chapter has left its mark on the Scottish genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Scotland, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered some Scottish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's red hair, pale skin, or those classic Highland features. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and Slaintum Hath, goodbye for now.